always knew when I watched Ranger, a guy like Ken Hill and yourself, mm -hmm. and Auburn being on that team. When you see the now in baseball, pitches like Taylor Hearn, Devin Williams, different pitches, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for the game, but we still have a long ways to go. Um, it seemed like, you know, less and less more black, black kids are playing the sport. And I think, you know, for them to really want to play, you got to start from a young age. You can't try to pick it up at 13, 14, like maybe basketball, football. You got to love it. You know, it's, it's not fast paced like basketball and football. You know, it's a little slow. I mean, I have, I have kids myself that are older now and they didn't really like it. I mean, and I played the game and took them to the field a lot. You know, they still didn't really gravitate towards us. So I think they need to do something to kind of spice it up, make it a little bit more fun for the, for the younger generation. I love, I love it. So for you, you had other stops, but you're considered a, a Ranger lifer. Can you talk about playing in Texas, you know, playing in, the, in that ballpark, number one, and the heat now seeing the difference, and just the overall fan base being a Ranger? Um, actually, the heat as a player, it yeah. didn't bother me. I love playing baseball outside. You know, I think it was meant to play outside. But as a fan, you know, when you get to June, July, and August here in Texas, you know, it's nice to be able to come to the ballpark and be inside and the temperature be 75 degrees. So I kind of get it. You know, it's a, uh, you know, I think usually if the team wins, if, if the team is winning, it doesn't matter how hot or how cold it is, people will show up. But it definitely makes it a lot more enjoyable when the temperature's at a certain degree. You know, beyond the World Series, what would you say for you is your favorite Ranger moment being a part of it? Um, it's kind of funny because when I would hear certain guys talk about, you know, the 2010, 11 team, you know, I was part of like their first playoff team. Um, you know, the, it, it's kind of like, eh, I don't know, you know, because I thought those teams were good too. Um, so it's, uh, it, it was definitely fun and I'm glad I got to experience it. Um, you know, I definitely enjoyed my time being here and playing with those teams but you know hopefully you know years to come they have those same teams and guys can say the same thing that i'm saying you know speaking of those 90s teams i mean i was talking about the other day you had a back-to-back -back or two-time mvp like Juan gonzalez you had pudge rafi and you added will clark later when you think about the talent from those 90s teams they don't get talked about a lot can you talk about that team those teams and how good they were um this is what i always tell people with the teams maybe in the 90s as opposed to teams now. Um, back then, there were no cell phones and social media. So when you played the game and you got on the bus or the airplane, you had to talk to one another. You know, we talked about the game a lot more than the kids do now. There wasn't, the analytics wasn't like it was now. So I see a lot of guys that come to the game, you know, they, they show up, they play, they go home. You know, everybody's on their phone and stuff like that. So that's why they have so many more coaches, you know, to teach them the game. But we kind of had to learn with our, our teammates, you know, we actually, we used to have roommates, believe it or not. Um, so it's just, you know, to see the change in, you know, how, how the game is played now, you know, it's like, yeah, I like it, but some parts I don't like, but that's just the way it is. So you obviously had Ron Washington as a manager, but you had a guy like Johnny Oates as well. God rest his soul. Can you talk about Johnny Oates and his impact for you, especially in that first run? So Johnny Oates was definitely, um, he would have loved analytics. I mean, this guy, you walk in his office, you know, he's got his pins lined up. He was very neat. Um, always smelled good, too. Um, you know, Ron Washington was like your neighbor next door that would just always be out there. You'd be out there watering the grass. You know, he pops his head over. Next thing you know, you, you've been out there talking to him for two or three hours. You know, he was just, it was just a different dynamic how Johnny and, you know, and Ron Washington was. Ron Washington's just more like your everyday guy, just having fun. and. It's, uh, it's definitely, it was, it was fun playing for both of them. I love, that, I love that. So I have this question called Baseball Mount Rushmore. And what I like to do, I usually break down position, but I'm gonna have fun with you today with this one. I want you to give me, if you had to put four Rangers on a Mount Rushmore of baseball for the Texas Rangers, who would be the four Rangers? So obviously Nolan Ryan. Um, let check how far back we can go on this one. Um, you know, Pudge is, Pudge is the catcher. Um, we'll make it easy. Give me one outfielder and one infielder. So you gave me a pitcher and Nolan. Okay. Gave me a catcher. Right. That's how I usually do it. And I give you one infielder and one outfielder. Period. I would go Juan Gonzalez. Okay. And. It feels tough. It feels pretty tough. Yes. Um, you know, you can either go Beltre or Michael Young. I like that. I like that. I like that. 
So just for you growing up, who were some guys that you looked at and you said, man, this makes me want to play the game of baseball? Who did you look up to? Oh, Dave Parker. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to watch the games. Uh, you know, I used to get, you know, back then the cable was, we used to get WTBS and WGN. So WGN used to play the day games, you know, in the summertime. So I could watch the game. So I'd always watch like Ryan Sandberg, Andre Dawson, you know, those guys. And then maybe later on at night, they'd have the Braves game on. Um, and, you know, I'd watch guys like Dale Murphy, you know, those guys like that uh, play. Okay, so with the Hall of Fame, the Rangers Hall of Fame happening right now, a guy like John Blake, who you were around for both his tenures, obviously. So how is it to see him finally get his due and get his flowers? Because obviously being a PR back then, maybe it's totally different. And now with, like you said, cell phones, but being around John Blake, how does that, how does that, how you feel about him being in the Hall of Fame, which is well deserved? I love JB. Um, I have, always have a good time with him. Um, when you see him, it looks like he's always thinking. But every time I would see him, you know, I'd say, hey, what's going on today, John? You know, just, I always say something to him funny. Um, he's just, you know, because he's just always thinking, trying to make sure that, you know, everybody's happy and, you know, has to deal with the media. And I was like that clown guy would come in and just kind of give him, give him the smile, crack a smile every now and then. But it's really good to see him get in. I love it. I love it. So final question. We're going to call this the Fanatics View question of the day. Your favorite baseball movie, all time. <sighs> mm, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I kind of like. I know people say Field of Dreams, but I like I like Bull Durham. I feel like that was like the most accurate version of how minor league baseball used to be back in the day when I came up. I love it. I love it. Well, Darren, you know, as a as a fan of baseball, growing up in baseball and being able to watch you, especially as a young guy going into my adult years, I appreciate what you have done for the culture of baseball and life of baseball and continue to do great things, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you.